Hello there pretty people of the internet and welcome to my channel. My name is Annika and today I'm going to talk about how to make a revision plan or a revision timetable for your midterms or exams. We are about to hit revision season whether that is for midterms or for finals and I know it can be very stressful to try to figure out exactly how to revise for your classes. Over the past eight years since the IB college master's degree and my law degree I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to best revise for my exams and this has had to change depending on where I am in my study career, which level of studying I'm doing and it also depends on the class. This is the method that has worked great for me and I think there's a lot of useful information you can take away from it even if you decide to go with a slightly different method for yourself. I am coming at this kind of with the understanding that you probably have other things going on while you revise. I know depending on like your school and everything like that, you might have specific time set aside to revise, like a revision period, whether that be a week, two weeks, a month. But I'm gonna assume that you don't have that, so I will talk about like including like your homework and classes that are ongoing. If you do have a revision period, great. You can do all of these things just a little more hardcore. Your starting point for making a revision plan is your syllabus. The more detailed the syllabus, the better. So for instance, when I did the IB, it was very easy to make a revision plan because I had very specific syllab syllabus points stating like exactly what I had to know. So that was fairly easy to study from or to use to study. Like the studying was still hard, but you know what I mean. But if your syllabus is fairly generic, as mine were in law school, where it was kind of like, we're gonna cover this crime. It gets a little harder, but you can still do it. So don't stress out. Just take out your syllabus for every class that you need to study for. The next thing you want to do is to pull together all the resources you will have available to you. So this will be all your notes, any study guides the professors have given you or that you've found elsewhere, your textbook, note from classmates if you've missed class, any midterms or quizzes you've had, any practice exams or past exams you've been given or can find online that are on point, um, any other practice questions that you might have, anything you've gone over in class, PowerPoint slides, all of that. You don't necessarily need to have like everything printed out and ready, you just need to know all the things that will be available to you because you need to know how much information you kind of have to shift through and how many places you can look when evaluating how much time you need. The next thing I want you to do is to evaluate how much time you have. So this is fairly easy, look at today's date, look at the date of your exam, figure out how much time you have between that. I make my revision timetables in a Word document. I feel like this is the easiest to make, to change, to print, and if I lose it, I always have a backup. What I do is I pull up a Word document and I put in a table. And I usually start this about a month before my exam, and I will fill out all the dates leading up to the exam and fill in the exams as well. It's very important that you put in other things going on as well because you're likely not revising in a vacuum. So put in if it is your mom's birthday and you're planning on spending the day with her. Put in if you have a big assignment or a big presentation or project due in a class during this time period. Put in if you have like extra work days or volunteer events or like a sport event. I personally don't put in like my day-to-day -day things like my commute and the homework that I have going on on a daily basis just because I'm used to having to do that anyways. So this is kind of for everything that's a little out of the ordinary. Now you have a good overview of what the next few weeks or month is going to look like. So you can start planning for when you are going to revise. The next thing I do is that I evaluate exactly what work I need to do. So I usually try to spend very little time on this. It just needs to be somewhere where I can kind of have all my thoughts jotted down. Sometimes I just use the syllabus and I don't make a separate list at all. Because now you need to start filling in to your calendar that you just made when you're going to do what. So start backwards, give yourself at least a day before the exam. I usually like to do two days just because sometimes things happen and you need a little bit of buffer time. But at least have the day before the exam, make sure that you are not studying for that exam because you need a break. So kind of in your mind, blank out the day before the exam and then all the other days you now need to figure out when you're going to get what work done. I like to break up the kind of work I do into three different parts. I do learning, I do applying, and I do corrections. So for learning this will be me reading, going through my notes, going through the textbook, 
memorizing flashcards, all of that kind of work. Applying would be me doing practice questions, past exams, things like that. And then the last part, corrections, will be when I revise all the practice questions and exams that I've done, correct it, correct my knowledge and learning, kind of go back to the learning stage, and then make sure that the knowledge I have now is accurate, correct, and that it will help me on the exam. Of course, this is kind of circular and is often overlapping, right? Like you don't learn in a vacuum and by applying you're still learning, but this is kind of how I break things down. So I will do learning, then I will do practice questions, and then I will do corrections of those practice questions in three separate study sessions. My baby's really crying. I do have to go get him. Sorry, Ben's gonna be here with us for the rest of the video because he doesn't want a nap, do ya? I like to break the learning, applying, and the correction into three different study sessions. Now, ideally, this would be on three different dates, but I realize that sometimes you don't have that kind of time, so that I would do it just in different study sessions. So this would be, for instance, your morning study session, your afternoon study session, and your evening session, if that's kind of where you're at. I also like to stagger these three so I don't do the same thing every day for different classes. So what I mean is that I don't want to do a whole bunch of reading for four different classes in one day. Oh. What I'll do is that I'll do reading for one class, applying for another or two class, another one or two classes, and then corrections for the fourth <laughs> class. <laughs> yeah. I also don't recommend that you hyper focus on one class. Like sure you might have classes that need more attention, but don't just think I'll study for this one class this whole week and then I'll get to the other classes next week because things inevitably come up that make it difficult for you to catch up. It's a lot more beneficial to you and your confidence in all your classes if you spread the work as evenly as possible. When I have my full calendar made in Word, I print it out and I either put it in the front of a binder. So I'll either put it in front here or in the back of my daily use binder or revision binder or I will fold it up and put it in my back pocket. The key is just to have it accessible so that you can e easily make corrections and know exactly what you have to do on a daily basis. If the amount of work you do every day is manageable, then you can know and have good conscience that when you're done for the day, you're done and you can take a break and do something else because it's important that you give yourself breaks and that you give yourself scheduled intentional breaks. Sorry. Something else I would do when I was in the IB was that I would have three of these like plastic folders and I would print out all the exams I would have to do for the day and I would put them all in here so I could just easily put it in my backpack so that if I decided to go study at a friend's house or study at the library I had all the things with me and I didn't have to like scramble to print things out or to try to do it electronically because I find that to be very difficult. So just having three of these that I would constantly rotate and have prep three days in advance made it very easy for me to just grab what I needed, head out, and be confident that I would get my work done on the daily. I have found that this method of revision planning works really well for me because I get a very good overview of how much time I have, how much work I need to do every day in order to stay on top of things and not get super stressed out, and because <laughs> and because it doesn't take too much time. When it comes to revision period, a lot of us procrastinate productively by spending a lot of time planning and plotting and like figuring out how to do work, but that really takes time away from the work you need to do. So I usually do this whole process, it takes me less than an hour, I maybe do it when I like watch TV and I'm having like a good time and I'm not super stressed. Yeah! So that I can just get to studying and get that important work done. <laughs> You're so happy. You're so happy I rescued you from that nap, huh? I think that is all. Please let me know if you have any specific questions in the comments down below. Give this video a like if you've gotten any helpful ideas from it. Do you want to say bye bye Ben? Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all later. Bye bye. 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 Well, you made that difficult, didn't you?